Hi there, welcome to episode 02, Modeling the Raspberry. Let's start by opening Houdini and creating a new project. Go to the menu and select File, then New Project. Type a name for the project. And also type a path. Click on the Accept button to close the window. Ok, now let's save the scene. Go to the menu and select File, then Save As, and type a name, and click on the Accept button to close the window. If we look at a Raspberry image, we can see it has an irregular conical shape, and the fruit is conformed of small pieces called droplets. So, we could start with a sphere and then deform it to get the general shape, and finally, on this deformed sphere, we could copy small irregular spheres as the droplets. Let's create an empty geometry to model the Raspberry. Go to the network view, then press Tab, type Geo, and press Enter twice to place the node. Click on the name and rename it as Raspberry. This node is our geometry container to model the Raspberry. Press H to home the node. Let's dive in by pressing the I key or by double clicking on the node. To create a sphere, press Tab, then type Sphere and press Enter twice to place the node. Change the primitive type to Polygon Mesh. Reduce the radius to 0.5 and set the rows to 11 and the columns to 18. Now, let's delete the top and bottom parts of the sphere. You could do it manually, selecting the polygons and delete them. In this case, we are going to place a delete node. Click and drag on the output port of the sphere node and press Tab, type Deal and press Enter. Change the visible flag to the delete node. Now, in the parameters and check Enable in the Number tab and check Enable in the Bounding Volume tab. If we reduce the Y size to 0.9, we can see the top and bottom parts, but we want the opposite, so go to the operation and change it to Delete Non-Selected. To avoid too many points at the top and the bottom, let's delete some of them. You could do it manually, selecting the points in the viewport and delete them. But it's better to do it by selecting ranges. First, let's group the top and bottom points. Click on the output port of the delete node, drag, press Tab and type Group. Now press Enter. Type a name for the group, type GR Borders. Change the group type to Points. Now uncheck Enable in the Base Group section and check Enable in the Include by Edges section. And finally, check the Unshared Edges option. Now we have the top and the bottom points selected as a group named GR Borders. To delete half of the points, let's create a node to group half of the points. Click on the output port of the group node, drag, press Tab and type Group Range. Now press Enter. Type a name for the group, in this case type GR to delete. In the base group, select our previous group, GR Borders. Besides, change the group type to Points. Now. To select only one half of the points, we can specify a rule in the Range Filter section. For our purpose, we can select one of two points. Now, click on the output port of the Group by Range node, drag, press Tab, type Blast, and press Enter. And in the group, select the GR to delete. Half of the points are deleted. It's important to note 
that grouping, selecting and deleting components can be done manually. If you know that nothing is going to change later and it's easier, then do it manually. But if you know you'll have to change parameters or even replace geometries, then it's better to do it procedurally. It takes more time, but it's quite flexible and powerful. Now, let's continue scaling the shape in the Y direction. Click on the output port of the Blast node, drag, press tab, type trans and press enter. Increase the Y scale to 1.1. To get a conical shape, let's use a linear taper node. Click on the output port of the transform node, drag, press tab, type linear and press enter. In the viewport, you can change the parameters interactively or you can also change them in the parameters tab. First, change the capture direction to the negative y axis. So, put 0 on the z axis and minus 1 on the y axis. Move the taper amount to obtain a conical shape. 0 0.5 is ok. Let's also move the y capture origin 0 0.2 units up. Now, let's twist the shape using a twist node. Similar procedure. Click on the output port of the linear taper node. Drag, press tab, type twist and press enter. Change the capture direction to the y axis. Type 0 on the z axis and 1 on the y axis. Move the y capture origin to minus 0 0.5. Finally, twist the shape moving the twist slider. 64 will be ok. Now, it's important to break the uniform distribution of the points in the geometry. One way to do it is by simply placing a mountain node. Click on the twist node, drag and press tab, type mount and press enter. And you can dial some parameters to achieve the required deformation. That's the easiest way. Let's try another way using a point bob node to have more control. With this node, we can implement VEX code using visual elements instead of writing code directly. Let's try it. Click on the output port of the twist node, drag, press tab, type point bob and press enter. Double click or press the I key to dive inside. Here we have some parameters at the left and some output parameters on the right. We are interested in modifying the position parameter P and specifically the Y position. Let's add a noise node, press tab, type turf and press enter twice. Change the signature to 3D noise and connect the global position to the position of the noise and the output of the noise to the output position and in the viewport the result is a mess because all the positions of the points are being modified by the noise. We don't want that. We just need to add some variations to the original positions in the y direction. The position and this noise are vectors, so we can break them down into the three components x, y and z. For this purpose, we need a vector to float node. Press tab and type vector to float and press enter twice. Connect the position to this node. Let's create another vector to float node and connect it to the noise output. Let's maximize the pane to have more room. Now, we are going to use an add node to add the noise to the Y position. Press tab, type add and press enter twice. Connect the Y position to the input of the add node and connect the first component of the noise to the second input of the add node. Now, we need to convert back these individual components to a vector. Press tab, type flow to vector and press enter twice. Connect the not modified components 
x and z and the modified component y. And finally, connect the output to the position output. Let's restore the pane. It's better, but we still need to adjust some noise parameters. So, select the noise node. But, instead of changing these values here, it's better if we can do it outside. To promote a parameter, middle click on the parameter and select Promote Parameter. Let's do it for the frequency, offset, amplitude and roughness. These parameters are now grey out at this level, but if we go outside one level, now these parameters are available. Change the frequency to 10, the offset to 2 and reduce the amplitude to 0.1. OK. We have the basic shape to hold the droplets. To model the droplet, let's create a simple sphere. Press Tab, type Sphere and press Enter twice. Set the primitive type as Polygon, set the radius to 0.1 and the frequency to 6. To deform the sphere, let's use a mounting node. Click on the output port of the sphere node, drag, press Tab, type Mount and press Enter. Reduce the height to 0.3 and the roughness to 0.4. Let's increase the scale. Click on the output port of the mounting node, drag, press tab, type trans and press enter. Increase the uniform scale to 1.6. To copy the duplet, we need a copy to points node. Press tab, type copy to points and press enter twice. In this node, we have two inputs. The first one is the geometry to copy, in our case, the droplet. Let's connect it. And the second input is the target points to copy to, in our case, the conical shape. Let's connect it. Now we have the droplet copied on the conical shape to form our raspberry. At the moment, we have copied the same droplet. Let's add some variation to the scale and the orientation of each droplet. To do this, we can add variation to the attributes P scale and orient of the points of the conical shape. Press Tab, type Attribute Rand and press Enter twice. Drag the node to place it in the flow. At the moment, the color is randomized because the color attribute CD is specified in the attribute name. In the attribute name type P scale. This attribute is a float type, so in dimensions change the value to 1. By changing the min and max values, you can see the effect on the variation of the size of the droplets. Set the min value to 0.9 and the max value to 1.2. Now, to change the Orient attribute, we need another attribute randomized node. Press Tab, type Attribute Rand and press Enter twice. Drag the node to place it in the flow. In the attribute name, type Orient. This attribute is a vector 4 type, so in dimensions, change the value to 4. Set the mean value to 0 and set the max value to 360 degrees for the three components X, Y and Z. Now, each droplet has random orientations between 0 and 360 degrees. An extra touch, just to practice VEX. Let's suppose we need the droplets to have an increased size from the bottom to the top, so the P scale will be proportional to the Y position of the points. In the viewport, press the spacebar and 3. We can see 
the bottom is about at minus 0 0.5, while the top is about at 0 0.6. So, we need to remap this range minus 0 0.5 to 0 0.6 to a new range to affect the scale, for instance 0 0.9 to 1.1. The fifth function allows us to do this remapping. Press Tab, type A, W, and press Enter twice. An attribute wrangle node is placed. Now drag it to the floor. The new value add p scale will be equal to the original value add p scale multiplied by a value proportional to the y position. Type fit and parentheses. The first argument is the y position add p dot y. The second and third arguments are the original range, in this case minus 0 0.5 and 0 0.6. The fourth and fifth arguments are the new range, in this case 0 0.9 and 1.1. End the line with a semicolon. And just to check, modify the value for the new minimum range from 0 0.9 to 0 0.2. You can see how this scale is proportional to the position. Let's type 0 0.9 instead of 0 0.2. We just need a subtle variation. Let's return to the perspective view by pressing the spacebar plus the 1 key. Now, in the network editor, if we place a clip node changing the direction to the x-axis and check the geometry, we can see because of the droplets intersections we have geometry inside geometry. We can get rid of this interior geometry by using a boolean node. Press tab, type bool and press enter twice. Drag the node to the flow to connect it. And change the operation to intersect. Now, if we check with the clip node, we can see the interior geometry has been deleted. By the way, at the bottom we have a hole. To fix this, we can simply add a couple of points at the bottom. Let's add them after the blast node. Press Tab, type Add, and press Enter twice. Drag the Add node to connect it. Enable the first point, and add another point. These points are located at the origin. Let's move them to the bottom. The first point to 0 0.1 minus 0 0.46 and 0 0.03 and the second point to minus 0 0.08 minus 0 0.46 and minus 0 0.01 Let's check it in the boolean node It's OK. Finally, let's place a null node at the end and rename it as out. Go to the object level. OK, the Raspberry model is finished. In the next video, we are going to create the fluid emitter. Thank you for watching this video, I'll see you soon in the next one.